let's get familiar with the Formula One gearbox system. In the past few years, Formula One has witnessed several changes and tweaks in the rules. Teams and manufacturers have come up with some genius, innovative ideas to get around the new regulations. The power unit and transmission have seen some significant changes. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the transmission system and how it transmits power to the wheels. But before we kick off, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. F1 Technology Generally, when people talk about Formula 1 technology, engine power and aerodynamic performance are all things that are mentioned. But there are few opportunities to actually bring up the gearbox technology. Formula 1 transmissions are highly complex, much like a motorbike gearbox. The gearbox is a very carefully developed, secret, high-tech product. All of its 400 individual parts are specifically manufactured for each team, even down to the minor things like the bearings and seals. The gearbox is very instrumental to the driver's performance and all aspects must be working and in perfect shape to give them a cutting edge. Gearboxes have to be constructed so that the driver's skill and involvement are the most important in controlling the car. These rules ensure that no vehicle gains a competitive advantage over another. According to expert estimates, the cost of creating a Formula 1 gearbox is about €150,000. This is a small price to pay compared to the impact of a substandard gearbox during a race. The reliability of the individual parts inside the gearbox varied before 2009. Some features like the gear wheels had to be replaced after every race. Back then, many of the internals came from outside suppliers like Extract and Hewland Engineering. Mike Hewland founded Hewland Engineering in 1957. They invented the bespoke racing gearbox and have supplied racing car constructors in the world ever since. Today, Hewland still provides motorsport transmissions to a great client list. How a Formula One gearbox operates The gearbox is sometimes called the transmission, depending on which side of the Atlantic you come from. In Europe, it is called the gearbox. The British-English term transmission refers to the drivetrain, including the gearbox, clutch, differential, and final drive shaft. When you're in America, the difference is that the gearbox is any device that you use to convert speed and torque. In their terminology, transmission is a type of gearbox that can be shifted to dynamically change the rate or torque ratio, just like in a vehicle. It is the transmission's job to transfer all of the engine's power to the rear wheels of the Formula 1 car. The transmission bolts directly to the back of the machine and includes the gearbox, differential, and drive shaft. Shifting gears in a Formula 1 car is not the same as shifting gears in a regular road car. Instead of using a traditional H-gate selector, drivers selecting gears use paddles, and these are located just behind the steering wheel. Downshifting is done on one side of the steering wheel, upshifting on the other. Although fully automatic transition systems, including systems with sophisticated launch control, are possible on Formula 1 cars, they are now illegal. This helps reduce the overall cost of the powertrain and enables drivers to use gear shifting skills to maintain and gain an advantage in a race. Most race cars use sequential gearboxes, much like in motorbikes. The sequential gearbox gives the driver several essential advantages that are very useful in a race car. In a race car, the motion of the shift lever is either push forward to upshift or pull back to downshift. If you're in gear and you want to go higher, for example, from second to third, just push that shift lever forward. To go from third to fourth, push it forward again. To go from fourth to fifth, you guessed it, push it forward one more time. It is the very same motion each time. To drop back down, say from fifth to fourth, you just pull that lever backwards. In European mass-produced automobiles, the shift lever moves forwards and backwards to shift into higher and lower gears. There are actually two paddles on the sides of the steering wheel in Formula 1 cars instead of a shift lever. The left paddle upshifts and the right paddle downshifts. You do the same thing on a motorcycle, but instead of moving a lever back and forth with your hand, you move a lever up and down with your foot. The driver has to shift in sequence, there is no skipping, for example, from first to third. You can't really do that in an F1 car, you've always got to go to second gear to then get to the third gear. It's the exact same when downshifting, and the advantage of this system is that shifting mistakes are impossible. You always go into the next gear. F1 cars use highly automated semi-automatic sequential gearboxes with paddle shifters. 
The regulations state that eight forward gears and one reverse gear must be used with a rear wheel drive car. A rear wheel drive is a form of engine and transmission layout used in motor vehicles where the engine only powers the rear wheels. What is used to make a Formula 1 gearbox? The gearbox in Formula 1 cars is usually constructed using carbon titanium. This material is used because heat dissipation inside the car is a critical issue. Formula 1 cars generate a lot of heat, as most of the parts are moving at incredible speeds against strong friction. The gearbox is usually bolted to the back of the engine. It's important to understand the position of the gearbox when a driver is in the car. At the front of the Formula 1 car, where the driver sits, is a tub made out of carbon fiber materials. Formula 1 Gearbox Regulations There are many technical regulations for the Federation Internationale de la Automobile FIA, and they enforce all of these rules when it comes into the making of gearboxes. They specify that only two wheel drives are allowed, and the driver must be able to cut the clutch manually when the vehicle is stopped. This is so because in the event that the vehicle stops along the course because of a faulty mechanism or for any other reason, course attendants should be able to push it out of the way. The manual clutch cutoff switch inside the vehicle ensures that it works even when the vehicle is switched off. The gearboxes are expected to have standard performance requirements like high transmission efficiency, lightness and compactness, durability and reliability, and casing stiffness. Unlike mass-produced vehicles, the rear suspension is directly attached to the casing, and sufficient strength and stiffness are required to hold it. The gearbox must also be so small that it does not impede airflow to the rear wing and diffuser at the back of the vehicle. The rear part must be narrow in order to allow air to glide through it easily with minimal resistance. Gearboxes must also be easy to maintain in the long run, and it should be possible to complete gear ratio changes in intervals between racing sessions. How are gearboxes developed? Before the development of a gearbox can proceed, the manufacturers first need to understand the level of technology required for a Formula 1 gearbox. This leads to two major issues that need to be addressed in order to learn it. The first of these problems is design engineering. Mass-produced commercial automobiles use helical gears, where the emphasis is put on reducing gear noise. In contrast, racing cars use spur gears, which have more emphasis on efficiency and strength. Although there are differences between the two types of gearboxes, the tools used to design them are the same, as the foundations of their creation are also the same. The second problem to tackle is the production technology. In order to ensure gear strength and maximize transmission efficiency, all gearboxes undergo heat treatment and subsequent gear grinding, that is, grinding of the entire tooth down to the bottom. This process requires a lot of trial and error to get the same level of surface roughness throughout. To produce gears, some of the top teams set up their own technology development environments, in which gears are designed and produced internally. The lower ranking teams procure gears from speciality manufacturers. The more compactness of the gearbox, the greater the competitiveness of the vehicle. Manufacturers have gone through great steps to ensure that the size of their gearboxes is as small as possible. They've done this using various innovative techniques like using high strength gear material and advancing the production methods. Gearboxes in Formula 1 are pretty nifty pieces of technology that are not talked about enough. They are the result of countless rounds of fine tuning that enables them to work effectively at high speeds. Share your opinion with us. That's all the time we've got for you today, and that's all you need to know about Formula 1 gearboxes. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other video on everything there is to know about Formula 1 fuel. There, we went through all of the processes it takes to get high-performing fuel like that used in F1 cars. Thank you for watching, and stay safe!